Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode of our CW Top 10. This is going to be a big episode, and it's going to spark a lot of controversy. So I'm going to explain as in detail, and this is probably going to be long and probably worth your while. Anyway, this is the top 10 superstars of 2014. Now, warning, if you think that you should be more accomplished than you are, and you weren't here in 2013, zero things count from 2013, unless it was held from 2013 until 2014. It must have something to do with 2014. This is mostly by accomplishments, so... You could be one of the most skilled guys in the company, but you could still be the last guy on the list. So, the only thing the skill is going to count for, and I will explain any ties that are made because of skill, the only thing it can do is make a tie between two really close or equal scores. Or break two equal scores. So, without further ado, let's get to number 14. Coming in at number 14, now I'm sorry for no transition from 14 to 11. WWE only makes top 10 videos, and we did take it directly from there. All rights belong to WWE. No copyright infringement intended. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, coming in at number 14, it was generally a tie with a one-two point kind of thing, but it's all a tie between Kendall, 1056, Y3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Legend, Crusher, and Maxer, 70. All those people, with their accomplishments com you know, mixed together, have approximately the same point, and they're all four very talented individuals, and they are coming in at number four. Coming in at number 13 is our last giant tie, but near the bottom of the list is where a lot of people's accomplishments that don't have many accomplishments but are very skilled tie together. So we have Even Born, one, two, three, multi-time cruiserweight, world tag team, tag team champion. Rabid Cool Tough Guy, Intercontinental Champion, European Champion, Tag Team Champion, Hungry Sniperfish, Tag Team Champion, Intercontinental Champion, Longest Reigning, and Generations, the Intercontinental Champion, and the World Tag Team Champion. Now, all these scores weren't exact with their skills and their accomplishments. They all pretty well equaled each other out. And those, even Rabid, Hungry, and Generations, are coming in at number 13. Coming in at number 12, this is the first not tie we see on the list. Coming in at number 12 is I, Sporticus, 1, 2, 3, 4, or Sport, 1, 2, 3. With about 15 points on our point system, which I don't know if we're going to reveal how it works, because it's just ridiculously complex. She's a one-time European, a two-time Divas champion, a longest reigning Divas champion, and a Royal Rumble victor. Before we continue on, now that you sort of know there is a point system, this is all based upon point systems on you get a certain amount of points for certain accomplishments, longest reigning triple crown. I think I briefly touched on that, but now you know it is give or take measured out throughout 2014. So let's get to number 11. Coming in at number 11 is a tie between Mr. Flames Dude 44, the former CEO, and Waffle Shark, the former undisputed tag team champion both a little bit under 20 points waffle shark had a tag team title reign two world tag team title world tag team title reigns two european title reigns and that's approximately it's from what we could find not including hardcores and flames dude 44 had one world heavyweight and uh, had one world heavyweight and one tag team, along with counting his Triple Crown Championship and the most amount of world title, world ta heavyweight title reigns, tied with several other people. And that is number 11. All right, after a few interruptions, we literally have a banned list of four people right now. It's ridiculous. Um, So coming in at number 10, and didn't you just love the transition? Doesn't it just make it better to have that little transition from WWE? No copyright infringement intended. Um, infringement. Um, so coming in at number ten is Mater the Great One Two Three and the Ultimate Legend Viper RKO One Hundred One. That's his title. Just before you get, so they both had a little over twenty points each. Mater had two United States title reigns, fairly long reigns, a one-time World Heavyweight and a one-time Cruiserweight. A lot of his skill was counted into consideration, and a lot of his long reigns were counted into consideration, as well as co-main eventing WrestleMania. Viper RKO 101 had a United States title reign, uh, one United States title, a tag team title, three Europeans, and one cruiserweight, along with Triple Crown remaining on every single person that is a Triple Crown champion, and the two people that are Grand Slam, 
Grand Slam counts for twice as many points as Triple Crown, but believe me, I'm not going to state exact points, but they're they're fairly low. So it's not like Grand Slam will be the huge decider, like it's worth three times more than any world title or anything like that. It's it's below, it's about the same as a tag team, so it's not too high, just to give you a general idea. Anyway, coming in at number 10 is Mater and Viper. Let's go to number 9. Coming in at number 9 is Create Jacob and Flame 3, 2, 1. Both actually very, very close in points at near 30 points each. Create Jacob is a one-time Road WWE Champion, one-time Intercontinental Champion, one-time Tag Team Champion, one-time Cruiserweight, one-time um, European, and has a longest reigning bonus for his Cruiserweight title that barely made it into... Um, that barely made it into 2014. And he is also a triple crown champion. Flame 321 is a one-time world heavyweight champion, a one-time cruiser, or a one-time intercontinental champion, a one-time tag team, one-time world tag team. And he is indeed a triple crown champion. Those two at just under 30 points each. Create Jacob and Flame 321. Coming in at number 8 is the two winners of the Rookie of the Year Slammy Award, Mam Mam and Flakuchu. These two, if you actually take time to think about it, are very, very close to equals with all their title accomplishments. So we have Flakuchu, a one-time World Heavyweight, a one-time Intercontinental, possible to be a two-time at Royal Rumble. Make sure you check that out on January 18th, 2015. 6 o'clock p.m. EST is the show. Make sure you come. Anyway, one-time Intercontinental, one-time Tag Team, and a two-time Cruiserweight Champion, and a one-time NXT, along with being a Triple Crown and having the longest Tag Team title reign. Whereas Mam Mam is a two-time Row WWE Champion. World titles are worth a lot, so that can really bo- boost you up there. <clears throat> And he is a one-time European champion, a two-time NXT champion, getting two-time most amount of reigns for both his Road WWE two times and NXT two times, tying with several other people. They're both at exact, pretty well exactly the same amount of point, one point difference between the two, is Flakuchu and Mam Mam. Coming in at number seven is one and only person, Ranger 92, one of the few people on this list that has been here since 2013, but obviously none of his 2013 counts. He was on the w, uh, the top 10 of RCW 2013. Make sure you go check out that list. Anyway, he has a little under 40 points at one World Heavyweight, one United States, two Intercontinentals, one World Tag Team, and he is a Triple Crown Champion. All those accomplishments together bring him up to just under 40 points and it is ranger at number seven coming in at number six is here is where we get over the 40 point line it is agent cool the best and king gunna agent agent cool the best has a one-time road wwe um title an intercontinental we did factor in the fact that he's defended so many times a tag team champion a European champion, a two-time cruiserweight champion, a triple crown champion, and he has the most intercontinentals tied with several other people. Ahem. King Gunna has a one-time world heavyweight, a one-time road WWE, a two-time intercontinental, a one-time tag team, and he is a triple crown champion. Those two just over 40 points. It's King Gunna and Agent at number six. Coming in at number five is one only person just under the 50-point line is Mr. Ness Quick One. He is a one-time World Heavyweight Champion, a one-time Road WWE Champion, a one-time Tag Team, a three-time Cruiserweight, four, or, uh, a two-time NXT Champion most times, and he is a Money in the Bank winner. Now, while that doesn't may not seem as much as the two below him, with this point system and with his skill and with his, you know, all that adds up. He's just barely able to be over King and Agent. Coming in at number four, five is Nesquik 1. At number four is Dean Ambrose, Maniac, Butch Teen Beach Movie, The Rockstar 1011, and Beast Mode is activated, and Ethan JB6. Both tied at the middle mark, give or take, between 50 and 60 points. 
very high scores for both competitors, competitors at both the SummerSlam and Night of Champions pay-per-view against each other. Very good matches. You can go check out the Night of Champions one. Get that thing more views because it is a hell of a lot. Anyway, Ethan has two world heavyweights, one row WWE, one intercontinental, two tag teams, and a triple crown champion, along with being the one, the only, the king of the ring. And Dean Ambrose Maniac has 10, just one, sorry, I don't even, um, well now you know a value, <laughs> a one-time world heavyweight, a three-time United States, a one-time tag team, a three-time cruiserweight, a triple crown champion, and one of two, the very first, Mr. Money in the Bank. Coming in at number three, you probably expected him to be on the list. Number three is Mattis320. Now, what shocks and what makes a super-duper tale about this is that at the pay-per-view just before King of the Ring, which I do believe was payback, he had no championships, just a couple hardcores, and he never really you know, had anything to brag about. And then, boom, he's the number three of 2014. He himself, as an individual, has... Two row WWE title reigns, three United States title reigns, a one-time world tag team champion, a one-time European champion, a triple crown champion, a longest reigning champion for his United States title reign, a most times for the row WWE, and all of that together gives him all very, very, very close to 60 points. Coming in at number two, I'm just going to go right out and say it. We pretty much all know who it is. It is no one. Let's move on to number one, guys. Anyway, coming in at number two is Eddie Armour 9373. Now, I will tell you his points after I tell you everything. It pretty well annihilated the entire, entire division around him. Anyway, 20 points for World Heavyweight. Actually, no, I'm going to tell you the full points. Anyway, two-time World Heavyweight. You already knew that point system. Two-time United States champion, four-time tag team champion, most times, same with most times for World Heavyweight, and longest reigning for World Heavyweight, a three-time World Tag Team champion, a one-time European champion, a triple crown champion, and an elimination chamber victor. And now all those points together put him at a staggering, almost 30 points above number three, 83 points. That is... A huge, huge, huge number when you look at everybody else on the list. Anyway, number two with 83 points is Eddie Armour, 9373. Coming in at number one, we did have a list of accomplishments on my other computer before I got my new computer. So this is, we don't remember the numbers, but I do remember them both being above 90. So this is Kids Rock 4 and I, Brooksy, at a tied score they have R Kids has RCW, Brooke has World Heavyweight and Road WWE, Kids has Road WWE, both have United States, both have Intercontinental, both have Tag Team, both have been Tag Team together and World Tag Team together, both have Euro, both have Cruiserweight, Brooke, keep the camera on me, damn it. both have Cruiserweight, surprisingly, both have Divas, and both are the only two Grand Slam champions, Kids won an Elimination Chamber, they both have longest reigns, most most times reigns. It's it's basically a neck and neck race between the two. It is Kids Rock Four and I Brooksy at number one. Thank you, RCW, for checking out this RCW top fourteen, I guess. Anyway, give us other suggestions for what we should do. Try to make them reasonable and then, you know, do your joke ones, do them at the same time. So we actually have something to work with. Because you won't see weekly top tens if we don't come up with more ideas. We can eventually revise lists, but they actually have to change. Anyway, make sure you check out weekly content on the RCW Network. Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Saturday. However you say the calendar, I don't even know why I said it Monday through Sunday. Um, top tens every weekend. This Royal Rumble, you're not going to want to miss the first Royal Rumble to be on the RCW Network. And two top tens every pay-per-view weekend. Something to look forward to. And remember, we're going to cut out the top, the two top tens per pay-per-view weekend if we can't get more top tens. That's just more incentive to tell us more things. We have an exciting one for next weekend, dash the weekend after that. And thank you, RCW Universe, for making 
an exceptional 2014 for the Roblox Championship Wrestling Group. We have hit 500 members by the end of the year. That is something that, you know, at our little over 100 members at the beginning of the year that we never thought we'd hit. I am the chairman of RCW Kids Rock 4. And we also have the... Brooke. I'm I, Brooksy. The chief executive officer of Road WWE. If we have Dean here, we could. Wait. And one thing I'd like to point out to uh, Brooke... I'm going to add menu. I know this is a little out of um out of <gasps> thing. Could you say ban list, please? <laughs> the Not amount of times... List. Colon ban list. The amount of times we got interrupted. Seven times. Including if we get to 10,000 views, which we're really close to, and as long as you guys keep checking out videos, we'll be there within the next three or four videos. So, yeah, 10,000 views... Brooke's going to upload a bloopers video of all kinds of bloopers that we have. We may not have too, too many, but some of them are just... Uh, uh, two of them happened. I think it was God, Goku, and Killa. So you really yeah. want to see that. Anyway, thank you, RCW Universe. universe for, sorry for the two-minute-plus outro. But trust me, just keep viewing videos. And I am Kids Rock 4. And Brooke, do you want to jam out to this dance time? Yeah, I do, actually. We um, are Brooke and Kids. I am Brooke, and that is Kids. And we are... Approving this message. Well, I forgot. Don't correct me! <laughs>